All right, so our last section is on reimbursement for PrEP and PEP services. Okay, so our procedure codes that we're most often using for PrEP and PEP are our new patient and established patient evaluation and management codes. This is the sort of general section 99201 through 99205 for new patients. Again, this is for any new patient you would be using these codes. And, and why would you select 99201 versus 99205? Well, that's all, of course, based on um, the time spent with the patient. Who can perform these services? Uh, credentialed providers, APRNs, and physician's assistants. So, uh, you know, again, you want to check, make sure that there's that, that that's true in your state, and that you can receive payment via the the patient's insurance carrier. But for the most part, uh, these various physicians can or clinicians can perform the services. The selected code is based on the time spent with the patient. I always encourage, if you can, to to actually document somewhere in the note the time that is spent with the patients. Okay, uh, for example, just going back to this, or we can stay on this slide. For example, just, just writing in your, in your workup, I spent 15 minutes in the face-to-face -face encounter with Mr. X discussing the risk, benefits, limitations, possible complications, dosing, importance of adherence, and required conditions for continued prescribing of PrEP. Uh, he voiced an understanding and wishes to proceed. So that simple statement tells a coder a lot of information. It tells them that it was a 15-minute encounter, what was discussed, and that there was, um, there was uh, acknowledgement from the actual patient. So that's, that's an excellent statement. Um, this is the layout of the preventive medicine codes. Uh, I just wanted to show you how it looks based on time. It, honestly, it isn't that much more complicated than this. This code 99401 is used for preventive medicine counseling and risk factor reduction. Uh, when we're using this counseling code, remember we can use this code alongside another ENM code, uh, just as long as there is a separate diagnosis code that we use for each of the, the use procedure codes. That's the only way we will be paid. Uh, just some more tidbits on this preventative medicine procedure coding. They're time-based codes uh, that they're used to document preventive counseling. Uh, counseling for PrEP adherence in patients without HIV fits into this description. So that could be the possible a diagnosis code that you're using. According to the CPT book, risk factor reduction services are used for persons without a specific illness for which the counseling might otherwise be used as part of the treatment. And the code series 99401 through 99404, that's what we were just looking at, are for individual counseling. There are also uh, a, a separate set of codes for group counseling. If you are using group counseling, uh, which I encourage you to do so, I hope you are, uh, please make sure you're using the correct codes. Uh, that's one where there is there is separate reimbursement for group counseling. I would just want to double check with your insurance carriers that they are actually paying for it. Uh, it is becoming more common and I am seeing more reimbursement, but you just want to double check with that one. Document the time, can't emphasize that enough. Always document the time of a face-to-face -face counseling encounter. And these codes have a status indicator of not covered for Medicare. For some, but some private payers do recognize and will reimburse for them. So it's, it's unfortunate, but for this, this source is really saying that they're, they're not covered for Medicare at this time. Okay, some PrEP and PEP billing codes. Uh, just, just like our previous, there actually is some overlap with our, uh, the previously listed HIV codes, as you can see. Um, a lot of the difference in these codes is whether or not there was exposure to HIV or uh, suspected exposure to other infections, uh, suspected possible transmission, exposure to viral communicable diseases. Uh, um, a lot of this may come down to how the patient is actually describing that exposure. And uh, ICD-10, of course, is giving us every different option they can think of uh, for us to be as specific as possible. 
when we when we code. Uh, uh, another thing, other other screening codes you can use uh, or diagnosis codes you can use alongside your counseling and um, and screening would be high risk sexual behavior and other hazardous exposures. You do not have to use these codes. These are just you know possible related codes that you may want to to use when you're billing. And labs for prep initiation. Uh, definitely make sure that you're you're coding your labs separately and if necessary using the the appropriate modifiers but again your your billing and coding staff should know if you need to use that um, that lab related modifier uh, the the laboratory testing for prep is often hiv ser serology screening and optionally a metabolic panel and then once pres prescribed you're going to want to order the surveillance labs every three months and you would bill each time that they were uh, received. And just for uh, some references, there are really fabulous references out there now. This is just one. We wanted to make sure you had the link. And in all of these slides, you will see I provided the reference to wherever I was getting the information. I really do encourage you to go to some of these links. They, they provide a lot of background. And there's, um, there's just a lot of information online that will help you and back up any uh, coding that you're, you're doing through your electronic health records.